Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Peace and blessings upon you all. Dear students, this is the lecture 3 of the pin diagram of Adenoid. It's microprocessor and microprocessor peripheral interfacing. Okay. Last time we saw a lot of things. Like we have the ground pin, the voltage pin, the power pin, the ground pin, and then all of these uh, data and address multiplexer pins, okay? And here the address and the status multiplexer pins. We are talking about all of them. We talked about the 32 pin read. We have seen the ready, the reset, uh, the clock. And now let's talk about interrupt and a non maskable interrupt. There are two things. One is the interrupt, pin number 18, okay, and pin number 17 is non maskable interrupt, okay. Basically, uh, we have two interrupts in 8086. So, for these, we have two lines one is for the non maskable interest, and one is for the interrupt, and one is for the maskable interrupts. So, this is non maskable interrupt, and this is maskable interrupt, and uh, for this, we have A259A programmable interrupt controller. So, this is our PIC programmable interrupt controller which controls the interrupts. Basically, a uh, maskable interrupt is like, like it that we have an interrupt line, then this is the device, and then we have here, say for example, the AND gate. Basically, not like this. So, we have this is the interrupt, and we give it to the AND gate, okay, and this one here uh, is the mask cable input it can be 0 or 1 and this is my interrupt so interrupt is coming okay to the processor whether this is 0 or 1 depends on whether we take interrupt or not if it is 0 output will be 0 so we are not taking interrupt we are making the device which is interrupting the processor wait but if it is 1 here then we take the interrupt. So, maskable interrupts can be, you know, we can uh, make them wait. But non maskable interrupts, you cannot wait. So, you cannot do anything. So, the processor has to take them, processor has to, you know, stop doing whatever it is doing and process the interrupt. Okay. So, now, now, now there can be a lot of things like there is a divide error. Okay. There is some instruction interrupts or sometimes CPU itself does the interrupt. There is some other device doing an interrupt which is non maskable means you have to process it. You cannot um, continue with your job and then later on think about this non maskable interrupt. You have to do it right now. And But maskable interrupts what we do with that is you can uh, make them wait until the processor becomes free because we have one more line to it which uh, makes them 0 or 1. Depending on that, we take up interrupt or not take interrupt. Now, this PIC, uh, Programmable Interrupt Controller, why we call it Programmable Interrupt Controller? Because we can control it using the software commands from the 8086 processor or the same with the 8088 uh, uh, CPU also. Okay. So, uh, the PIC uh, actually appears as a set of input output ports to the software. And its main job is to accept interrupt request from the devices attached to it. Okay. And what it determines is uh, that which requesting device has the highest priority. And then it activates the interrupt line on the CPU. Okay. And depending on the priorities, it checks the priority of all the interrupt. Uh, some, because there could be many devices who are, who, who are trying to interrupt the CPU. So depending upon that, which device has the more priority that will be taken on by the 8259A PIC. So these lines, uh, line 18 and line 19, uh, these are actually these pins will help us uh, for the interrupt and uh, sorry 18 and 17 and non maskable interrupt. And when some device has uh, put on the interrupt, we acknowledge that device using this when in the max mode, we'll see max and minimum mode later on. Interrupt acknowledge, INTA means interrupt acknowledge. Okay, so these interrupt and NMI are active high. That means they have no bar on top. That is when they are high one, they are active. Okay, uh, some are active low, like for example, RD. So that means when it is low, then it becomes active. Okay, but this becomes active when it is high. And this one is for the non maskable interrupt pin number 17 
and it, this is what I have told you. Now let's talk about the pin number 23 that is the test okay this is the test so what is the test doing so it is used to test the status of the math coprocessor so we have the 8086 as a main processor and we use another processor which is 8087 which is called as a coprocessor why because it helps in doing the maths so it helps in doing the mathematical job for the 8086 so that means we are using multiple processors so when we can use multiple processor is when we have here the maximum mode so in minimum mode we are having only the 8086 without any coprocessors and in the maximum mode we can use the other processors so in if, if we are trying to use the 8087 uh, coprocessor math coprocessor then we have to be in a maximum mode so how we would interface 8086 with 8087 let me uh, take this opportunity also to teach you that thing also because i'm not teaching only just the pins i'm telling you trying uh, my best to in a, in a short manner to give all the details also now this is the interconnection of 8087 with 8086 this is my 8087 coprocessor okay and this is my main or host processor it, it can be you know 8086 or sometimes 8088 also because 8088 is a different processor which is having the same interfacing like 8086 so what we have here is uh, what we have read about uh, the other other ic's like 8259 8259 is the pic we read about that uh, just shortly and 8284 is a clock circuitry okay and 8288 is a bus controller okay it is a bus controller uh, uh, which controls the bus okay and we have here in the 8087 we got firstly the clock it's tied with the clock and uh, the clock circuitry 8284 actually gives you the ready reset or it gives the clock to the both of these guys both of the 8086 and 8087 and if 8086 processor is the main processor has to work using the 8087 processor so we have to work on the interrupt okay and uh, you can control these interrupt programmatically using the 8259 okay circuitry and then uh, you can access your uh, your 8087 and then you have the request and grant rq and gt that's request and grant then there is a ready okay uh, and ready is here there is a reset you can reset you can see whether the, it is ready or not you can uh, request the access to the 8087 or you can you can be grant you can grant it okay then this interrupt which is coming from here also goes here to uh, you know from here to here also so so that we can interrupt our coprocessor to do job for our 8 for 8086 processor and then this is the QS0, QS1. We will see that Q uh, and their S0, S1, and S2, the status bus, which is con uh, controlled by the A288 control bus. Okay. And uh, then there is a BHE and S7, which we have seen, that is the address and data bus, uh, uh, you know, demultiplexing for demultiplex and that. And that is given to the bus interface components. And then, uh, then uh, it will go through the multi master system bus. So, this is our 8087 and 8086 um, are having the uh, is having the inter interconnections and interfacing. Inter uh, I mean, 8087, how it is interfaced with the 8086. Okay, so here the test pin it is used to the test of the status of math core processor or not. Is, is, it, is it busy or is it free? Uh, so this busy pin of 8087 is connected to this pin you know the uh, we have seen the busy pin that is connected with the test uh, of the uh, main 8086 process which you can see from here this is the test pin of the 8086 okay and this is connected with the busy pin of the 8087 microprocessor since it has a bar on the top that means when low it will activate the 8087 processor but when high it uh, executes its own job it doesn't uh, connect to the 8087 processor now one of the important things in the 8086 and as well as 8088 processor is that your processor works in the two modes whether this is a minimum mode or maximum mode 
So who will decide whether the processor is working in a minimum mode or a maximum mode? It depends upon what is the this pin 33 strapped to. If it is strapped to plus 5 volt, then it is uh, it works in a minimum mode. Okay. But if this pin is strapped to the ground, okay, if it is strapped to the ground, then that is the ground, this one, okay, that means then uh, the processor works in a maximum mode, okay. So what is the difference between minimum mode and maximum mode? In minimum mode, basically, you have a single processor. So all the job is done by the processor itself. So the bus control, mainly the bus control where we have the memory, we have input, output, uh, peripheral devices and all this all has to be done by the your CPU itself okay but if you have the maximum mode so in a maximum mode we can have uh, basically we can have the uh, different processors we can have we can uh, like co-processors and uh, uh, we, we can have many coprocessors here. We can have input output processor. We can have the math coprocessor. So it is working with the different processors. So in that scenario, we are not using uh, the CPU itself to control everything. Rather, we have the separate, uh, you know, bus controllers. Okay, like we have eight two eight eight bus controller. We read about that. So that means we give interrupt. Uh, to the bus controller and bus controllers takes the job of controlling the bus and uh, interrupts of other uh, coprocessor. So the 8288 bus controller which is added to provide a sophisticated bus control function and compatibility with the multibus architecture. Okay. Where we have uh, not only the 8288 bus control we also have the 8289 we have the 8289 arbiter and we have the 8288 bus uh, controller these together with the 8086 cpu gives a multiple processor uh, support to this on, on on the system bus okay so in a maximum mode it is not the cpu but the bus controller okay rather than CPU, which provides uh, all the bus control and command outputs and allows the pins uh, which were previously delegated to these functions to be redefined to support multiprocessing functions. So we have to do something so that we can have a multiple processing uh, you know, uh, functionality. That is why we have these pins which work in a multiprocessor system and a uniprocessor system, in a minimum mode and a maximum mode, these pins have to do all the job which I am talking about. So now let us talk about the pin description for minimum mode. So this is our minimum mode. If we talk about the minimum mode first, okay, then we have the first thing is the interrupt acknowledgement. So basically, uh, we we can have now the interrupts because we have the multiple processors uh, working together. And they have to stop the your processor and let them do the job. So this is done by the interrupt, and your processor has to acknowledge that interrupt. So interrupt acknowledge. Okay, this is the interrupt acknowledge signal pin number twenty four. Uh, so when microprocessor receives interrupt signal, it acknowledges the interrupt by generating this signal. Okay, uh, and it is an active low signal. Then it's really active when it is low because it's a bar on top. So that means we acknowledge that device that you can go forward and do the job. Now, ALE address latch enable signal we have already done uh, done with it. Okay, it indicates that valid address is available on the bus AD0 and AD15. Okay, and it is an active high signal and remains high during T1 state, and it's connected to the enable pin of latch A282. Okay, we have talked about this thing. You can uh, just see the second video of second lecture in which we talked about this thing, right? Now the next is the DIN bar that is data enable signal and we have already seen that also uh, we have talked about this thing also because this signal is used to enable the transceiver 8286 where, where we did the demultiplexing of the um, data and address bus and we talked about those things in a previous uh, lecture so you just uh, see that okay um, because we had a transceiver 
which you just use to separate the data from the address and data bus that is the demultiplexing it's again active low signal and i have talked about how the mechanism uh, so just go to that video and see that now the next one dt uh, and r prime this one also we have discussed it, pin number 27 this is the data transmit and receive signal so it decides the direction of data flow in through the transceiver whether we are going from processor to the input output devices and memory or from memory or input devices to the cpu so when it is high data is transmitted out and when it's low data is received we have already talked about it in the previous video now pin number 28 if in a minimum mode okay because these all are the minimum mode okay if we are working in a minimum mode right that means our uh, pin number 30, 33 is with the 5 volt so that means we are working with the minimum mode at that moment pin number 28 this signal is issued by microprocessor to distinguish memory access from input output access so are we going to access the memory or input output so m oblique io so m is memory input output so input output bar that means if it is high so that means memory is accessed because at that time if it is high means one input output will be zero because on the top is the complement okay and if it is low so memory you are not accessing memory rather input output will be high so you are accessing the input output devices because it is the cpu itself who has to access the memory and input output devices of his own okay maybe we have the direct memory access there and all which we can uh, which we'll read later on maybe but if you have a multiprocess system then it will be the whole job of this will be taken by the bus controller now the next one is the uh, right signal okay and pin number 29 it is the output which you want to write so uh, it is used to write data in memory or output device depending upon whether your memory is high or input output uh, because i told you about the m or io if it is high m uh, pin number 28 is high then that means it will write to the memory if pin number 28 is uh, if pin number 28 is low that means you are talking about input output so the right signal the pin number 29 will write to the input output so it is an active low signal now in the um, minimum mode uh, 8086 processor as well as 8088 processor okay it provides two uh, that's hold and hlda okay so HLDA is pin 30 and pin 31 is the hold and HLDA means actually it's a hold acknowledge uh, signal so uh, you it is done after the hold what does the hold and HLDA means it's actually to talk with the uh, to talk with the DMA controller okay so we have a direct memory X control what does that mean is you know you have um, the CPU and you have the memory and you have the input output peripheral devices okay it may be keyboard the monitors and many more things okay now you want to get from input something and put it into the memory for example or from input of processor input output sorry devices into the memory okay or from memory to the input output devices okay now because in a minimum mode we have only one cpu we do not have the what is called as the input output processor which is itself a processor and which does all this processing job input output job of its own okay but here in the minimum mode the cpu is what if you have 8086 cpu processor the processor is sure doing we will do all these input output jobs in the beginning we it was the processor who who was doing say for example input and output in the meantime processor have to be idle because input output devices are very very slow and cpu has to do all this job so in the all that time cpu stays idle okay now then came the dma before input output processors where we had dedicated processors like we have for example sound we have a dedicated processors for sound processing sound video we have a dedicated graphics card which has its own processor own ram okay uh, which is not just a cpu it's a different processor uh, graphic processor for example which has its own ram own cpu and everything of its own which does the graphics job of its own 
But before all these input output processors, we had a DMA, direct memory access module. So this direct memory access module, what it does is it frees CPU. Even though CPU is the boss, CPU has to do all the job of its own, but CPU does is not tagged it. It only gives interrupt to the DMA to do the memory access. That means if you want to pass something from input output device to memory or from memory to input output device, CPU orders, but later DMA takes control of the bus and DMA takes control of the things and DMA does all these things. And when it is done, it intimates CPU that I am done. Right, boss is CPU, but DMA actually takes control of the bus, okay, and does this transfer. It transfers from memory to input output device and from input output device to memory the data, and it is to be done through the bus, okay. So that means DMA has to take control of the bus. That is why, from we get the con concept of hold and hold acknowledge, okay. So when DMA controller needs to use address. Uh, or data bus, it sends a request CPU through this pin, okay, from this pin, 31 pin, it sends the request, okay, it's an active high signal, and when microprocessor receives hold signal, it issues hold HLDA signal to the DMA controller, okay, and that is hold acknowledge, and that means you can, you can hold the, what, what is uh, DMA holding? DMA is actually holding the bus. So this is a memory for example and these are some this is the bus and then there are some input output devices okay whatever the devices are they have to be tagged with the bus so dma actually with the hold by hold it's asking the cpu that i want to transfer from memory to input out device or from input output peripherals to the memory data or addressing whatever it is so it sends the hold signal to the cpu and CPU sends back the hold acknowledge and that means you can grab the bus okay now you can grab the bus and just do this transfer of your own when you are done intimate the CPU I am done so by this what will happen is CPU is freed from this transfer later on we build our own in a multi process uh, because in a multi max max mode of the um, uh, this um, 8.82 processor we have the input output uh, processors which does all this job intelligently they don't have to be you know um, the cpu doesn't have to be the boss of each and everything okay so with that the minimum mode all things are uh, taken up and now we have the max mode where we have these guys if it's a max mode when when we can have a max mode when pin number 33 is having the ground connected okay that means now it will act as a max mode and the max mode what happens is uh, in the max mode it is a multi-processor uh, arrangement okay so this is a pin description for maximum mode so in a maximum mode we have a lot of things first in the bottom we have a two things qs0 qs1 and these two pins 25 and 24 provide the status of instruction queue now firstly, these uh, QS0 and QS1, there's a Q status, okay, instruction Q status, and these, these works in a multiprocessor arrangement uh, when in a max mode, okay, that means uh, they have to do something with the external uh, coprocessors, right? So it's a Q status um, which outputs uh, permit external monitoring of CPU's internal instruction queue. Okay, so if QS zero one is zero and QS zero uh, QS zero is zero, that means uh, it's a no operation. That means during the last clock cycle, nothing was taken from the queue. And if it is zero one, that means first byte of opcode from queue. Okay, you are that means the byte taken from the queue was the first byte of the instruction and if it is one zero then that means queue is empty the queue has been reinitialized as a result of execution of a transfer instruction and if it's a one one that means a subsequent byte one one subsequent byte from queue that means the byte taken from the queue was a subsequent byte of the instruction now we have uh, the three bits um, 
three pins 26 27 28 as you could see here a three status uh, signal pins okay um, the combination of these three pins will tell us what operations are being done by the uh, microprocessor and these uh, this information is required by the 8288 bus controller okay because it's the um, uh, bus control 8288 uh, which controls all the memory and input output control operations it's the bus controller you know uh, basically these uh, lines are used by a288 bus controller to generate all memory and input output uh, control signals and these are decoded as per uh, the following table so here is the combination of uh, these uh, pins okay like we got if we have the all zeros here so when it is all zeros basically uh, the output of the bus controller uh, which i just uh, talked about the bus controller right uh, a288 okay because it's what is interpreted by the bus controller in the processors having these three pins and their combination is being interpreted by the uh, bus controller right and that is the interrupt acknowledge the bus controller will uh, the command output of the because this is the output of uh, the bus controller okay and the output of the bus controller will be interrupt acknowledgement okay so like we had here the interrupt acknowledgement the same like interrupt acknowledgement so what's happening here is it's actually the instruction fetch from the input output space and thereby the bus controller uh, outputs the interrupt acknowledgement when it is 001 so you are trying to read data from the input output space okay so the output will be iorc okay um, and when this is 010 it is trying to it is actually interpreted as data write to so so bus controller interprets this as data write to input output space okay so we could be input output right okay and uh, when it is 0 1 1 basically it's a halt it's actually not used so you are not using uh, when it is 0 1 1 and when it is 1 double 0 so s2 is 1 s1 is 0 and s1 uh, is s0 is 0 so you are trying to fetch the instruction from system memory so uh, that is the opcode fetch the the next instruction to be executed okay that's the instruction fetch from system memory so that this is what you uh, interpret it as so it is sometimes also written as like this mrdc okay then we have 101 that is you want to read from the memory so data read from system memory okay uh, it is again we can interpret it as like this MRDC and if it is 110 it is memory write that is you are trying to write to the system memory okay so it's interpreted as if these pins are 110 that means uh, bus controller will interpret interpret it as uh, memory write so uh, <coughs> so you are trying to <coughs> write data to the system memory so we uh, have a command uh, output command like this M WTC okay and if it is all ones okay so it will go to passive state passive state means not active because uh, it, it, it because we have clock cycles t1 t2 3 3 t4 and t4 it becomes active and before that we have 1 1 1 that means it is passive so when all the three bits are 1 1 1 that means um, it's passive and we are not having control on the bus and all right but before we want to work we have to make it active now in a maximum mode because we are talking about the maximum mode and we know there there is going to be other coprocessors and all with your main processor and but the bus is common the bus is a common which is being shared and there is a chance that when the cpu is uh, sending something on a bus and other coprocessor may also access the bus so we need some kind of a mutual exclusion uh, okay 
and the 8086 uh, family architecture is explicitly designed to simplify the development of multiple process system how by providing uh, facilities for coordinating and interaction of the processors but how we do that is uh, how we apply the mutual exclusion even we can have here the preprocessors like 8088 and coprocessors okay so this um, multiprocessing coordination problem is solved by two methods one is the bus arbitration so we have the bus arbitration and then there is a mutual exclusion which you may have read about, uh, about these things in, in, in operating systems okay because we have for example a memory here and this uh, processor CPU is uh, accessing the bus and trying to write on the memory in the same time the other crow processor or other processor will try to access the bus and write to the same memory even so we need to uh, provide some kind of a mutual exclusion and bus arbitration okay who will act bus arbitration will decide who will access the bus and mutual exclusion will uh, you know um, deny the access to that memory location where this cpu is trying to write to so other coprocessors or processors shouldn't write to the same location or read from the same location which currently this cpu is writing to or this time say for example this coprocessor is writing to this memory location at that moment of time others should not write to that location so we need to have a mutual exclusion so mutual exclusion is done using the semaphores you may have read about the semaphores i'm going to not talk about the semaphores here which is operating systems you may have read about that and you can you can just revise the operating system notes for the semaphores or you can watch my video on the mutual exclusion in my operating system playlist go there and watch the semaphores uh, and its implementation and how to uh, remove the deadlocks and everything is there you can just go ahead and watch uh, the operating system playlist videos okay in my channel now <clears throat> we did we do this by using the lock okay pin number 29 that's a lock so if anybody this cpu for example want to access um, the bus and want to write to some certain location then it executes the lock that means what the lock does is it locks the bus for this cpu and when others are trying to access it and they see it is locked so they will stay back they will go in a busy wait loop okay so when the lock signal is executed other processors should not ask cpu to relinquish the system bus because they know system bus is occupied we should we should wait so when it goes low all interrupts are masked and ma interrupts and mask interrupts and hold request is not granted so because if anyone want to access the bus they have to send a request to access the bus and then they will hold okay they, they will try to hold uh, execute hold and the interrupts and masked interrupts they are all set you know they, they, they are not granted so because a hold is not granted when there is a lock okay uh, so so you have an instructions you put up the prefix lock there and what happens by that is if other coprocessors or some other processors try to access the bu bus they will not be given okay the cpu doesn't relinquish the system bus simple as it is so when it the bus is not given that means you will not access it now as you could see we have here two request grant lines okay that's pin number 30 and 31 here they are bidirectional and we have two pins for in a multiprocess system because this is for the uh, multiprocess system in a minimum mode we have for the same thing hold and hlda hold acknowledge right which we have read about so hold and hold acknowledge is same what we have here is request grant uh, lines and we had two lines for it uh, rq and gt0 okay and rq and gt1 and this rq and gt0 are is having the higher priority than rq and gt1 so what is happening by it is if any coprocessor or processor wants to access the bus it will uh, have a signal of rq and gt1 
on uh, or RQ or GT0 or on this on pin number 31 or pin number 30. If two processors, if two coprocessors simultaneously want to access the bus, okay, this is your CPU and this is the bus and this is the other coprocessors. If both coprocessors want to access the bus simultaneously, so say one uh, send a signal on the pin number six, uh, this uh, 31 and other send on a pin number 30 that is RQ GT0 and other sends on RQ GT1. Now, in that scenario, which has access, which has sent the request on RQ GT0 will be given access to the bus and this has to wait. This has to wait, okay, till it releases the bus, okay. So what happens is in, um, say, your coprocessor in this clock cycle uh, sends uh, the request, okay, it's a request to access the bus. In the next clock cycle, the CPU grants, so that's a request and grant, this is done on, on the same line, okay. Because here, if you see hold and hold acknowledge, they were, they were on a two different lines in a in a in a minimum mode, okay. In the because this is minimum mode and this is the maximum mode we are talking right now. That's multiprocessor system. It was a single process system, uh, so it was having a two lines for hold and acknowledge, okay. Hold acknowledge. But here it's on a same line. You send a request on the same line on pin if say on a pin thirty one it was asking for the request, and on the same line CPU grants the bus, okay. Then, um, so that's why the CPU sends uh, the acknowledgement signal on the same line, okay? And we need to understand that RQGT0 has a higher priority than these two. I have explained this thing. Only thing to note down is when, so what happens is first you uh, coprocessor requests on a one clock cycle, coprocessor request on a next clock cycle, if at all the bus is uh, idle, empty, uh, it is not being used then uh, it is it will be granted so in the next clock cycle your uh, bus is granted to it uh, to that coprocessor and in the meantime your processor can do other jobs also it can execute the instructions if it does not require the bus okay if your instruction does not require some bus transfer because you require a bus why we require a bus we require a bus to send data to the memory or input output if they, it's not input output bound instruction uh, it is some kind of an instruction which is to be done. Say, for example, it's an add instruction which is to happen in inside the registers of the CPU. It can go on that while the coprocessor is accessing your uh, bus. Okay, your main CPU is executing other other instruction. Let it be. So it's kind of a multitasking happening. Okay, and in the next clock cycle, say for example, it releases the bus. When it releases the bus. Now uh, that is what happens when when it when it occupies the bus, the lock will be enabled. Okay, so that means now nobody can access the bus because this coprocessor is accessing the bus. Now nobody, no other guy should access the bus till it releases the bus. Okay, till it releases the bus. When it releases the bus and uh, lock is not active, it is in a passive state. Then other if some other guys ask about the bus, we can give that. But if two Coprocessors or two, uh, some uh, two processors or coprocessors come together and ask for the bus, and who has come on a line thirty one will be given the bus, and line thirty one has to wait because RQGT zero, uh, oblique GT zero has a higher priority. With that, we um, come to the end of the all the pins. I think we had discussed all the pins. If there is any one left out, you can comment it, and if you have any queries, just uh, Put it in a comment box or just put it on my whatsapp and hopefully inshallah i will be answering each and uh, each and every question you have and i will clear every doubt you have inshallah ta'ala okay then see you uh next time until then ma salama